Welcome back. In this video, I will show you how to use your IntelliJ and your command line terminal in order to interact with your database and even test your endpoints. So I became inspired to do this because um, recently my Postman application has been giving my computer uh, a hard time. Mainly, I've been getting a, a blue screen error from it which is manageable mostly from cutting down using my Postman API client and also by uh, like turning off hardware acceleration. But other than that, I don't want my like computer running too hot basically using too many applications at one time and I just felt like Postman was giving me a hard time. So it's good to know how to use the command line terminal because you could possibly uh, work a little bit more efficiently so you're not like using so many different things at once. And so if you go here, I'm on IntelliJ right now, and you click here on your terminal, this is where you can run stuff. You know, you type in stuff here and, uh, you know, you can type in commands here. Usually the command is yellow and I typed in an invalid one. But I'm going to show you how to use your command line to um, to use your MySQL and your um, API tester. So I have here this source code here. This is a project that's already on GitHub. It's called Spring Security. And uh, we have an authentication controller here and this is these are the endpoints that we're going to test with the command line. So I'll go and uh, I'll just run the application right now and we'll see how it's running. It should be running solidly. On the GitHub I have, I, I show you like what the application dot properties, how to set that up. And, okay so this thing is running. So first I'm going to show you the uh, MySQL. So you just go to your terminal here and the command you type in is MySQL-U and enter your username and then you just do dash P. Okay. You click enter and they're going to want you to enter your password for your MySQL. And there you go, your MySQL starts up. And I'll try to do my best to include a link down below for how to set up, how to get your MySQL running. Um, a lot of people might run into a, um, a uh, what do you call it? Like a path variable, yeah, path variable error. So sometimes so sometimes this is what will happen to people. Let's say you type in a command, a bad command here, right? And you get this error here. And it'll say, this is not recognized as the name of a CMD let function script file. And so some people, when you, when you download your MySQL, you're going to get this error when you try to do SQL commands. And that's because you have to fix your path variables. So I'll try to include a link to show you how to fix that because you need to fix that in order to run the terminal. Let's ignore some of these commands here. So I was trying something. But anyway, when you're in MySQL here, type in, um, I think, show databases. I think that's right okay so you type in show databases and it's going to show you what databases you have and this project is using a database called um, spring YouTube so I just type in um, oh no I type in use yeah type in use Okay, so yeah, so it tells you you're using the Spring YouTube database, 
and then in order to show the tables that you have in that database you type show tables okay and it shows you which tables we have in here and then we're gonna do a, an SQL statement that you're probably very familiar with select star from user so we're gonna see all the data in the user table and there you go this sh it will show you all the data we have in the user table and this is important for uh, this uh, project okay and it's important for using the API so now I'm gonna show you how to use the API from your command line now you can't just um, start typing in stuff let me open up a new um, okay you can't just start typing in like HTTP colon uh, 8080 you can't just do this if you do this at home you're gonna get an error here because you don't have the stuff installed yet so what we're gonna use is we're gonna use a thing called uh, HTTP pi HTTP pi and this is a application for your terminal it's very powerful so what you do is you go to this website HTTP pi dot io slash cli and click install here and from here it just shows you directions on how to install so what you have to do is you have to use this package manager I think it's called called uh, chocolatey if you're using Windows if you're using Windows you're using you're gonna use chocolatey and if you're using some other stuff like Apple I think Apple they use like brew I think and maybe like um, Linux uses yum or something but if you're using a normal Windows person you're gonna use chocolatey and so you're gonna have to click learn more here you're going to scroll down to Windows and it tells you to install Chocolatey see its installation okay so you're going to click here I already have this browser okay um, so yeah it's going to take you to chocolatey.org slash install and from here you're going to use your PowerShell or your other command uh, command line thing and you're gonna have to follow these instructions um, you don't have to sign up for the email stuff you don't have to do that just jump down to step two and use individual if you're just like a normal normal person doing this stuff and um, yeah in your PowerShell run this thing get execution policy to make sure that you can go ahead and, and run this uh, install program so yeah you must ensure get execution policy is not restricted so if we open up uh, PowerShell here just run it as administrator just just to be certain and you type in that command get execution policy execution policy okay so if your execution policy is correct you should see something like remote signed okay and you're good to go and it tells you if it returns restricted you have to do some other stuff so anyway you're gonna copy and paste this command into your PowerShell and it, and it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna install chocolatey and then uh, from there you can type Choco to, to start using Chocolatey. I'll show you what happens when I type in Choco. I'm not, I forget what happens really. Choco. Yeah, it just tells you the version you have installed. So anyway, yeah, you got to go to this site here. You got to install Chocolatey. Then once you have Chocolatey installed, um, Let's see. 
yeah, once you have Chocolatey installed, you type in this command, choco install HTTP pi. I keep reopening this thing here, but I'm going to show you. Okay, so what you would do is you would type in choco install HTTP pi. I think that's right. And you would click enter. And that's going to, I spell install wrong. <laughs> but you click enter there. And uh, it's going to go through all this stuff to um, install HTTP Pi. And this chocolatey and HTTP Pi, it's so well done that it should take care of your path variables for you. So you don't have to worry about setting that up. Don't quote me on that, but. So once you get HTTP Pi installed, by uh, going through this chocolatey thing, you'll be ready to start using your command line to test your endpoints. So, uh, there was something else I was going to say, and I kind of forgot what I was going to say. Um, you scroll down here, and you'll see some basic like commands to get started. This is how you use your um, HTTP pi. So this is good to know here. This command here, HTTP slash F. So so we're going to use this command to to input like username and passwords. And I'll show you I'll show you this other stuff. So um, I already have HTTP pi installed on my thing. So I'll go ahead and and um, call the API. So if I type in HTTP, uh, and this is what you do, you do colon, and then your your local host port, most likely 8080, and you do API slash auth. And I'm going to run the list. I'm going to call the list. I'm going to use this. Uh, your request mapping comes from here, API slash auth. And I'm going to call this get mapping here, this auth list. And it's going to return a list of the information I have in my users table. I'll click enter. I have it so it the, the thread sleeps for a second. Okay, so imagine you're using Postman, and this is what kind of like Postman would look like. You would enter this thing near the top of your Postman, and you would get like your response body here. Um, I think the format's a little messed up right now. I'm going to type this back in again because I think, I think my um, interface bugged out a little bit. So you just click the up arrow. Let's call this again. Okay. That looks better. Okay, so this tells us about the three user IDs we have in our database. These are JSON strings. Email, password, username. And if we look at our table again, the, the data lines up. Right, our three users from our table, it's the same thing. And that right there is the command line. I just showed you command line to use your MySQL. And then the command line to do your API testing. So I'm going to uh, show you how to uh, just do some more advanced API testing. So you would type in HTTP. Colon 8080 slash slash auth slash sign up. We're gonna sign somebody up for this app, and all you do is you just simply type in that URL space, and you type in a uh, username, and we'll give this person a username of uh, YouTube. 
tester. And we'll type in password. We'll give this person password five. And we'll give the email equals YouTube tester at gmail.com. That's it. And then we're just going to click enter. And it worked. For some reason, these colors are funny here, but we get our message back from the server. User registration successful. Uh, let me retype. Let me enter this again. And let's say you type after the HTTP here. I have to use my arrow here. If you type in, um, let's say, space V, it's going to give you some extra information. So we'll send this. I think I can send it again. Let's see what happens if I send this again. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, okay. So when I type in V there, it's going to give us a little bit of information about what the information we just sent to the server. So it's going to tell us that we just sent a post. It's a post mapping. It just tells us a little bit more. So um, we're going to go back to our mail service. We have our mail dot mail trap. Actually, I'm going to go back. I'm going to open this in a new tab. My inbox. OK, so this is the user we just uh, entered into the system. And we're going to copy all the way up to here. We're going to copy this. Copy. We're going to go back to our terminal. And we're going to do HTTP. And we're going to paste that. OK. So we're going to verify. This is like as if the user registered. They signed up. They went to their email inbox and they got that verification link. And then they go and they, uh, they navigate to that link. And so I would click Enter here. Ooh, I got an internal server error. So that's not good. Okay, let's look at the stack trace here. I'll go to debug here. Let's look at the stack trace. What did I do wrong here? Um, did not return a unique result to. Okay, that's not good. Yeah, because I have, I went, I entered that thing in twice. That's probably why. Okay, so we'll go back to our terminal here. And let's look at our SQL table here. And we'll get the user information again. So yeah, I have two people with the user ID 8, 9, but they have the same information here. So what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to delete one of these guys. So I'm going to delete from, I have another table called token, where I think ID will equal 8. Let's delete that guy. Let's try that. Okay, and then I'll do delete from user where user underscore this this guy here user underscore ID equals eight. Let's delete one of these entries. Okay, now maybe that'll work better. 
go back to the this terminal here. Let's try that again. Yep, it worked. Okay, account activated successfully. So the account was activated successfully, and now I can log in. So I'm going to show you. Login is very similar to the command we did a little bit earlier. We'll go up one more, why not? But this instead will be like, we'll do the login here. Username, we only need username and password. Delete that. Okay, hopefully that works. Username, password, login. Let's try that. And it worked. So we logged in, and we know it works because when you log in, you get an authentication token. And that's basically where the program ends. We log in, and we have an authentication token here. We logged in with this username, YouTube Tester. So that's um. So this is just like it's it's basically just works just like Swagger or Postman. If you just know the commands to type in, uh, I'll show you another way of typing in a command here is you could type in like um, uh, echo. You can type in echo and, ent and enter this kind of string here. Something that looks more like a JSON. And you have to type this in correctly with the correct kind of quotes and double quotes. So you type in username and uh, YouTube tester. And comma, I think. And then uh, password. This all has to be entered in correctly. Password five. You close it out. And then you would do like this. You have to enter this kind of space here. And you just do HTTP. Um, yeah, this thing again, 8080 slash API slash auth slash login. So this is another way to send the request. Click enter, does the same thing. They're going to give us a new authentication token. So those are two different ways to do it. You can type it in this way, or you can like explicitly type in this stuff, or you can do it this way. And let me type that thing in again. Let's say, um, oops, I tried something. I tried using a different key. Um, echo HTTP. Yeah, if you type in like, if you're more specific with your request here, and you type in like, let's say, uh, post. Yeah, this is a post. Stupid. HTTP post. Let's type that in. Same thing. So you could type in post there just to test that this is a post, but you don't have to do that. Remember, we had that other command where you type in uh, dash v, and it'll tell you whether this is a post or a get. I think yeah it'll tell you up here when you ask for that extra information so let's go through uh, this here so this is like your um, HTTP pi like docs here and they tell you they give you some help here they tell you the, the kinds of commands you can type in So, hopefully that was helpful. Um, remember, go to this HTTP Pi website. Um, yeah, you go back to installation here. 
or yeah, Fort Terminal, right? So I showed you Fort. So you go to this, they give you instructions on this page on how to do the terminal stuff. So you click install and you're going to have to install Chocolatey. You're going to learn more. You're going to scroll down. If you have Windows, you're using Windows. You're going to go to the installation instructions. I already have it. But yeah, just go through, go through these instructions on installing Chocolatey. And then from Chocolatey, you're going to run this command, Choco install HTTP Pi. And then from there, you'll be ready to use your terminal. You'll be ready to use your terminal to uh, test your uh, API endpoints. Uh, and yeah, so um, work on that. Work on using your MySQL and your HTTP Pi uh, to test things from your command line and happy coding.